Yes. Uh, thank you again for being here. It's great pleasure to see you all. Uh, my name is Brock. I have been working at Gate27 as a director since uh, December. Uh, this event is the first artist talk uh, that I'm conducting, so it is special for me, and uh, we did really prepared for this event. Hopefully, we will deliver a very good one. Uh, before starting, I want to uh, make a little announcement that please keep your microphones off until the Q&A uh, session. At that time, you can turn your mic on and then ask your question and then uh, turn it off again. And also, as I said, we are recording the ev event to publish it on our YouTube channel later on. Uh, well, I want to thank Nilufur Farouk, who will moderate the event today, and also our guests. Uh, Lydia Chatsiakawu, who is the co-founder of Creative Craft Colla uh, Collaborators, and Christina Dimitriades, an alumnus of Gate27. And of course, we are happy that our roads crossed path uh, with dear Masai Balog. I want to start by giving a brief information about Gate27, and then I will, uh, and then uh, Ms. Melissa Tapan, uh, the founder of Gate27, will talk about how she came up with the idea of Gate27. And then I will introduce Nilofur uh, and I will hand over the microphone to her. Uh, well, Gate 27 was founded in 2019 by Ms. Uh, Melissa Sabanja Tapan as an international residency program to facilitate the research and production processes of different practices uh, and to provide a platform for interdisciplinary inter, uh, interaction. Gate 27 positions art as a research method and also a mediator to establish uh, new collaborations and dialogues between artists, researchers, and academics around ecology, sustainability, and accessibility through local creative networking, public programs, and events. Over the past three years, Gate27 hosted almost 60 artists from around the world at our premises in Istanbul and Ayvalık and conducted numerous artist talks Earth Notes, which was enriched by uh, dialogues on earthing sessions and several other events around ecological sustainability. In 2023, we will be hosting around 15 international artists at both of uh, our premises. So uh, now I want to hand over to Ms. Mesa Sabanja Tapan to give us a bit of her journey in founding Gate 27. Microphone. Uh, Miss Melissa, you are on mute. Uh, oh, yes. I've been no. I've been talking alone. Well, thank you, Brock, for the introduction, and thank you everyone for coming in and uh, being here with us. I'll give you a quick uh, introduction of how I came up with the idea of creating a residency program. I was studying development at Columbia University at the time, and I had the chance to experience and see several artist residencies around the US and Europe. And I thought establishing su such an institution in Turkey by reaching out to value creators from different disciplines would create a positive impact. And so I managed to bring together all of my existing resources and uh, we, we see that Gate 27 has started to flourish. As Gate 27, we will keep doing our best in contributing to the society we belong to and to the world at large. Thank you, Burak. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution. Uh, before introducing our uh, moderator, Nilufur, I want to thank Intelia. Uh, can we skip to the next slide, please? Uh, because I... Uh, be by the help of their generous support for hosting Masai Balog at Gate 27, I want to invite Saad uh, to give a bit of information about Intelli and our collaboration. Great, uh, thank you, Barack. Thank you, Melissa. Um, uh, I just, uh, uh, I guess, you know, I don't want to take too much time from the session itself, uh, which, you know, we're very excited to listen from, but uh, we founded Intelia three years back. Intelia is a, talent marketplace for strategy and finance. So that means that we train and develop leading analysts from emerging markets. You know, and thus we are driven to play a small part in developing these countries as knowledge economies. 
So this is in particular why the mission at K27 resonated so much with us, right? Because we are in the business that we believe guiding and nurturing the incredible talent we have in our countries, Pakistan, Turkey, you know, in the right environment makes people thrive and achieve uh, uh, incredible uh, missions and projects. Um, that said, uh, uh, you know, so we followed what Gate 27 has done and the fantastic effort and how they're guiding both, you know, developing upcoming emerging and established artists. So, uh, you know, we're very excited to be part of this journey and we hope that this Pakistan-Turkey cross-border collaboration, you know, can be an annual or periodic thing at least. Thank you very much, Saad, uh, for your contribution to the Creative Crafts collaboration and the hosting of and enabling us hosting uh, Masi Balok. Uh, now, um, I want to introduce our moderator, Nilifur Farouk, now. Uh, Nilifur describes herself as an art interventionist from Karachi, Pakistan. She successfully worked for founding several platforms, including Pakistan's contemporary art magazine, Nukta Art, and Karachi Bayanale Trust while serving in different positions in these institutions. She wrote several books and her texts are published in numerous publishings, including Critical Space, Art Speak, and Art Thinkings. And now I would like to hand over to Nilofer. Thank you, Barak. Uh, welcome everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the multiple uh, time zones. Um, you know, when um, I first heard about Mahzeb, it was very exciting to learn that a young artist was emerging from Balochistan. And then, of course, when she joined the Gate 27 residency, we all saw that she is extremely talented. Mahzeb uh, comes from um, Quetta, where she grew up and was and sort of uh, spent a lot of time. And then she went on to the National College of the Arts. Uh, where in 2016, she obtained her bachelor's degree in miniature painting and then uh, spent an, another few, I think about a year plus to get her master's a degree in visual arts from the same institution. Then of course, uh, she's been uh, exhibiting, working to develop her practice. Mahzeb's trajectory is particularly interesting because she comes from a space where there are very few opportunities to see art. And the artists that come out of Balochistan are also mostly moving out of there and practicing in other parts of, Karachi, of you know, Pakistan, in Karachi, and in the world. Mahzeb, uh, you know, while she was growing up, didn't have the opportunity to see a lot of art around her. And yet she was inspired by people around her and she went on and uh, made the effort to continue uh, in this profession by going to Lahore. I think uh, there must have been many challenges. So I'd like to ask Mahzeb about the opportunities she received with the support of people around her, as well as the challenges throughout before she was able to take on the profession and realize her dreams as an artist. Um, thank you, Nilo, for, for the introduction. And thank you, Gate 2017, for having me here. Um, I grew up, I was born and raised in Koeja. And um, um, though I had like um, um, an artistic family, two of my uncles are um, actively exhibiting and uh, practicing artists from Baloch, Istana, from those and Jamin Baloch. Um, uh, on the other hand, also like my uh, the women in the family, they're um, um, you know doing the embroidery that they learned from their um, aunts and um, um, mother. So um, I, I was exposed to um, you know feelings and concerns being expressed through visuals quite early on, and um, that that uh, has always inspired me. Um, uh, but, um, um, and drawing itself being a solace for me, um, I still thought that um, there was no such environment for a female artist uh, in Balochistan. And um, uh, not back uh, in 2012 when I was applying for uh, an art school. Um, so I had that support from my 
uh, family, my uncles, uh, and, and especially my brother. And uh, well, um, because um, when I'm saying the men in the family, uh, uh, Balochistan has a very patriarchal, uh, you know, it has a patriarchal society where uh, men, um, you know, uh, they have the say to uh, to quite too many things. Uh, and and uh, I was quite lucky and I feel privileged when it uh, comes to comparing with other girls from that region. Um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, when I went to NCA Lahore, um, it was quite new and exciting for me because I was able to, um, you know, um, um, that is the very first time when I learned about South Asian art history um, with, with to my brilliant teachers and, and also like Western art theories. And uh, uh, a lot of attention was paid to ideas. And I feel that that was very new to me that you would talk about work and it was quite uh, introspective in a way and, and inward practice where I had a lot of room for contemplation and that helped me a lot to realize where my inspirations come from and what, what do they mean to me. Um, yes. Thank you for your inspirational story, uh, Maze. But coming to your practice, uh, we see some persistent symbols there, like the mm -hmm. rock and the rug. And mm -hmm. they're constantly being reinterpreted and the form keeps changing. Mm -hmm. but the, the images of the old rugs are very kind of sensitive, very meticulously uh, created. They almost you know, look like as if they're fraying and losing their mm -hmm. patterns. Uh, mm -hmm. What special meaning do these, uh, you know, images have for you? These particular uh, symbols have for you. Mm -hmm. um, can we uh, move to the mountain slide? Yes. Um, so uh, because I was in Lahore when I was, um, the first time I left home was when I went to college. So um, I was at a distance from from my home where I felt that I belonged to. Um, so. Um, uh, we used to collect that was a practice at school that we used to collect references for our paintings for our work so um i would always whenever i would go back on my um you know uh, spring breaks or uh, winter breaks i would take a lot of photographs so um and later on i realized that the photographs would be of like um you know landscapes and of rugs um, my idea of home definitely and uh, they all had the similarity of it wearing out to me it, at least to me it looked like that um so these um uh, rugs they had you know um tattered and fraying edges and uh, uh, so did the landscape it had the traces of water but there was no water so um i was very much interested in the contours of the landscape and then again i tried to incorporate like these rugs in it um so um there is also quite a rift between these two. When you look at the landscape of Balochistan, it's quite barren and rugged on the surface value. And, and uh, when you look at the rugs, they, they you know, um, like for instance, here in this slide, um, they are, you know, uh, very geometric and there is a great sense of geometry in it, uh, very sophisticated ornamentation, very vivid, bright colors. So I would always be curious, where does the inspiration comes from? And um, I feel the shape and form these these crafts that exist in any place, be it Balochistan in Turkey, that says a lot about um, uh, what the people are up to, and um, also about the economical dynamics, and mostly about the socio political dynamics. And when it comes to Balochistan, I feel it it is very much um, depicting what is happening there because you don't get to see. Um, uh, rugs or you don't get to see um, um, the art artisans actively participating in these crafts anymore because of the strict demarcations uh, between borders. So we share a border with Iran, with Afghanistan. So you don't, uh, there is no flow of these people anymore. And um, hence we, we, we, we are, you know, I feel like uh, we, we have lost a, a great deal of these uh, um, objects that, that otherwise uh, um, help in identifying uh, us who, of who we are. So, yes. May I ask something, uh, may I ask some, interfere a little bit? Uh, mm -hmm. You say you share borders with Afghanistan and Iran, uh, but the, the Baluchistan tribe is uh, divided in these three countries. So how how is the relation, how do you communicate? Um, to, oh. So uh, Balochistan, um, there is a Balochistan in like Afghanistan as we, we are a province here in Balochistan and there is like a Baloch 
um, huge community and of course also in, in uh, Iran and in Afghanistan as well. But, uh, and uh, the people initially, they were like nomads, you know, because it was a pastoral society, people would be on foot. So they would travel back and forth to these countries and, and they would carry whatever they had. So these drugs, they would just fold them and put them on their animals and they would travel. Um, so because of this, uh, this borders not being so porous, um, there is also like, you know, and also other um, um, um, uh, reasons, uh, they're, uh, they're not so, um, you, you don't get to see them. So you, you yeah, always return yeah. empty handed when you look yes. for them. Yes, absolutely. The borders are no longer porous. But for artists, the borders are very porous. And you managed to go to Turkey to attend the <laughs> Gate 27 uh, residency where uh, not only did you have an opportunity to see all the crafts, uh, you know, the Turkish crafts, but also to meet a, a new community of artists. And uh, I'm sure it was exciting and you were also thinking about the direction of the work you should be doing. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about the exchanges you had and how it has kind of, it began to inform your selection of the craft Mm -hmm. um, so um, my very first experience, like the minute I set foot there, I was in love with the place because of uh, how liberated I felt as, as, as a woman, as a human being. And, and then also because of my consciousness of like, I'm very conscious of places and it plays a huge role also in, in shaping my thoughts and ideas. So um, Istanbul was very blue, like the sky was vibrant blue, the water, the sea was vibrant blue. and the light was almost blinding. So that's very different from where I grew up. And, and I, I, I thought it was um, um, quite inspiring also in so many ways. Um, so I went there to take on my um, place as, as uh, an artist in residence for their creative uh, craft collaborative project. And uh, I was to map this uh, craft studios, but in a way I was also mapping the city and I observed these layers in the city where, uh, you, uh, where you uh, see, you know, um, Ottoman culture, and then there is, uh, um, you see um, churches, and then again, you see some uh, mosques, uh, which is, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, or churches that are now functioning as mosques. So um, uh, that was quite fascinating for me. And um, <clears throat> um, I was also very lucky to be sharing uh, the space with uh, Christina, who um, uh, is uh, an artist, uh, and uh, she is a, a of, uh, from Berlin, she's based in Berlin, and um, I, th I thought that she had a huge influence also on how I was thinking at that time. And uh, um, because we shared the space, we would uh, always like um, um, discuss, and, um, um, and she would tell me books. She would, uh, um, or if I was reading something, she would just give her insights on it, or she would uh, recommend a movie or a film that she would think was relevant to what I was doing. So. Uh, I think it really shaped uh, the work in so many ways and how also I was thinking at that uh, point in time. Yeah, so maybe we can you know, extend the conversation to uh, Christina. Christina, um, you met Mazeb at the Gate 27 residency yeah. and uh, you know, obviously struck a friendship. You know, there was great synergy as you mentioned earlier and uh, you were able to you know, talk about a lot of things. And uh, and of course, there was a great uh, cross-pollination of ideas as we all see, as we discover new cultures, how, you know, ideas permeate, permeate uh, through, uh, you know, discussions. So uh, maybe you can share with us, how was your experience with Mazeb being there as a new young emerging artist? Yeah, uh, okay, as I will put a title or a little theme, that's why I sent these photographs, the, the plant hopper nymph, because it's something that uh, without mosaic, I will never have been able to see it. So, and it belongs to the very microcosmos, um, so it's very difficult to observe. So, also as a metaphor, as a name, a nymph and this plant hopper, which is a, a, an instinct that's so small that you really, with naked eye, it's very difficult to see. And uh, it's an amazing world, you know, it's like this uh, fairy little thing and between ugly and nice. And uh, I take this because I think what uh, uh, we did uh, through trust, uh, we opened the eyes of each other and we both uh, share 
a very beautiful uh, friendship, intellectual world, a ritual, everything. And at the same time, we, uh, you know, once we, you know, we had our isolation because the space is, it gives you this, that we can have our private moments, but then the rest uh, we could share and we could discuss further, especially about our works. And we had an exchange uh, all the time, as I said, like uh, we were taking walks together. Uh, we're taking the boat, uh, the ferry to Istanbul. We, uh, since uh, Mazaip had um, less experience of contemporary art, we made plans to see the museums, the exhibitions. So we're going and seeing all the museums, the Sapanzi Museum out there, a depot. So we're going to the city and then as I said, when we were to the neighborhood, we're always getting lost and try to change directions. So we discover new areas. And that was a beautiful game because uh, not taking the path we took every day, we discover so many um, people uh, doing, uh, you know, like uh, their everyday life, like uh, collecting uh, felt from the animals and making their own um, uh, uh, pillows uh, or, you know, some very old craftsmen. So it was like um, an adventure and I say like a very creative and intellectual trip that uh, led to a continuous uh, uh, friendship relationship that we still communicate when exchange ideas. And I have to say that, uh, to thank you, Melissa, because when I went to the uh, residency, she told me, Christina, this is my idea to mix artists from different places. Like you're, you know, an older artist, you have a lot of experience, so you will be with a younger artist. And I think, Melissa, this is a great, this is uh, because it really, as I open my, my work, open a perspective that I never imagined in this world. And when I Google her country and I saw this fantastic sculpture of Princess of Hope, I said, oh, look, this is kind of our symbol because Mazaip works with rocks. I work with rocks in the, you know, the Greek island uh, or islets. So I thought this uh, a nice, uh, you know, sometimes to keep relationship, we create uh, symbols or images to, you know, to name, to form the relationships and our creativity. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. That's wonderful that, you know, uh, you and Mazi met and were able to sort of not only think of images, but also ideas and hopefully a very long friendship and, you know, exchanges in the future. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Lydia now to speak a little about uh, this initiative of the Creative Craft Collaborative that uh, Mazi attended. Uh, you know, she was one of the first artists to be a part of it. And uh, she, uh, Maseb had already been engaging with crafts, particularly through the rug traditions of Balochistan and Pakistan. And uh, I think through the craft collaborative, she was able to discover something much more and eventually choose Reposé as the craft she worked with. So Lydia, could you tell us a little about this initiative? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this is um, actually, we are doing this uh, project together with uh, Bilal Gilmas. He is an uh, interdisciplinary artist and designer based in Istanbul. And I myself, I am a curator. I'm based both in Thessaloniki in Greece and in Istanbul. And we were uh, lucky enough to be together with Bilal, the first residency artist of Gate 27 in uh, Ivalk. So we are also alumni of uh, Gate 27. And um, Bilal, uh, for many years now, he has been uh, researching the craft uh, culture of Istanbul. And uh, actually, this research has enriched his own uh, artistic practice. Um, and uh, I have been working a lot on art for social change practices. So when we were invited to go to Ivalik, and since we were the first artists there, we decided to do craft research um, and to also leave something behind for the artists that were gonna follow us uh, in Ivalik. And um, even though everybody told us in the beginning, um, no, there are no crafts to map in Ivalik. We found uh, 36 in 10 days, and actually we didn't have time to map more, there are more. And we produced this small uh, map, uh, positioning them on the map. And uh, um, we also spent some time to, write a small manifesto, I would say, um, and develop a project called the Creative Craft Platform. So that since then has been growing quite a lot. 
and that uh, aims to map uh, crafts in order to um, highlight their potential for creative practices in the post-industrial era. Um, one of the ideas that uh, came up, and uh, Melissa, it was Melissa's invitation actually that prompted us to think about it, is to create a um, residency focusing on crafts. So uh, we uh, built this program that actually encourages international artists visiting Istanbul to discover the local craft culture, uh, see the reflections of the craft culture in uh, today's uh, social and uh, urban layers of the city, and reflect on how this uh, tradition, but also knowledge, technique, and materials can inform and enrich their own uh, work. So the idea is to create a really mutual collaboration between the artist and the craftsman, um, and uh, to uh, blend materials and techniques that come from uh, the two uh, practices, let's say. Um, and uh, I think that uh, Maxa will, of course, uh, talk about her experience and her work uh, later, what came up from this uh, collaboration with the local crafts. But I would say that in my um, view, it is a wonderful piece of art and a very successful result of this kind of collaboration. And uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to follow the whole process physically because the schedule that we made wasn't followed for practical reasons. But uh, the team then for K27, Bank and Run, and also an assistant that we had for production really helped the process uh, to have this wonderful uh, result. It, is, it was an experimental uh, process, the whole production, so it was done step by step. And every part of the work was uh, um, kind of generating the next step, how this whole wonderful piece came together. Right, Lydia. You know, Lydia, there's a very important question uh, that uh, are we using the craftsman as someone we outsource a skill too, or are we incorporating their ideas and their creativity? So can you very briefly tell us how you look at this issue? Exactly. Well, uh, that's what I also, why I said that uh, the idea is to invite the artists to think how they can uh, be inspired uh, by the craft techniques and also to um, incorporate the creativity of the craftsman and recognize the craftsman's contribution. Because there is a lot of similar projects uh, that are just, as we said, outsourcing. They go, they see that uh, this is a wonderful carpenter. So a designer designs a stool and goes and says, now you make it. Then, OK, the craftsman brings in a lot of his knowledge, but not so much of his creativity. Of course, we shouldn't go to the other end and see the, say that the craftsman is a creative in an artistic sense because they are not. Craftsmen are very creative in terms of production techniques, of the knowledge of the materials and what can be done, maybe not to design something. So this is where the two, I think the artist and the craftsman can complement each other. This was right. an idea by Maxa. Uh, she was inspired by the colors and the textures of the copper uh, uh, roofs of Istanbul. She started experimenting on her own with mimicking these colors with watercolor, which for us was a very interesting uh, and creative approach. And then um, she came with an idea to um, Thomas Susta, and Thomas Susta contributed through his knowledge of material, actually, right. through... Um, uh, kind of copying her uh, own sketch on uh, copper and then giving that to her to work further. So it was a kind of step-by-step um, -step collaboration. Uh, right. Also as um, uh, like artists, designers, creatives, we tend to romanticize crafts a lot. And uh, <laughs> this is... Um, or to feel a little bit antagonistic about it. I don't know why contemporary art feels that craft is a lower uh, kind of uh, uh, no, thing. No, of course not. But sorry to interrupt you, Lydia, but you know, we, are cons we have time constraints today. So, you okay. know, you've beautifully answered my question. Uh, 
but you know, in the spirit of the uh, this kind of collaboration, where uh, the voice of the artisan is not overshadowed, we also have a video that we'll be showing you of Thomas Ustad Thomas later on, and you know, he talks about his own experience with Mahzeb. But now I'd like to go back to Mahzeb and ask her about her selection of repose as a technique and how she was able to incorporate it in her work because this is the first time she was working with metal. And how did that idea come about? And uh, Bazeb, uh, can you share with us uh, what inspired you to work with metal and then eventually work with Repose? Mm. So um, while I was mapping the craft studios and I was uh, also introduced to um, um, quite a, a few crafts persons in Istanbul, um, I was also working on my own. I went to Grand Bazaar and I was also looking at what was being produced by these craftsmen. So um, that's what caught my eye that um, all of, at least um, majority of the uh, objects, they had a reflective surface. And I, I felt that they, it was kind of imitating the form of the uh, waves in water because I would take the ferry and then to Emenunu. So I would uh, see this similarity of form in it. And I thought that um, uh, why not uh, use a metal surface? And um, because I'm interested in carpets, yes, I look uh, a lot at carpets and I study their form, but I would like to transfer um, like a drawing or try and um, imitate a form of a carpet on, on a copper sheet. So that was the initial idea. And um, um, when I went to, um, uh, so I was introduced to Ustad Thomas when I said that I want to work with copper um, and uh, we discussed the idea. I took my sketch of a uh, um, tree of life that is a, a recurrent theme in, in uh, Baluchi prayer rugs. And also um, it is a very common symbol in uh, carpets, in Middle Eastern carpets and in, in Persian carpets. So um, I, I used that. And I did a drawing and which was transferred uh, on the copper sheet um, uh, with, uh, there were a few challenges as, as there was language was one thing, even with the translator, there were, was something that could was always missing out. So there was this struggle, but I would call it a beautiful struggle because it, uh, um, it worked, uh, you know, it, it worked, uh, you know, amending that uh, we would uh, come up with something new entirely. So uh, I was, uh, once the uh, engraving was done, uh, I um, wanted a specific color. So the copper was red, but it was constantly exposed to fire. And every time it was exposed to fire, the color would change entirely. And that was something quite fascinating for me. So, um, and I would always say, I want this color. I want this color to be retained. And the next time when, you know, Star Thomas got even more excited to show me what else he can do, the color would change entirely. Towards the end, it turned to a st silver steel-like color, which, which uh, I was taken aback and I said, no, I don't want it. So um, I, I, I took the uh, sheet back home and I experimented it back at K27 studio. And then I had the copper patina uh, with, you know, very bright, vibrant blues and greens. Um, and um, um, which we um, also preserved like through through uh, experimentation and and um, I think yes um, uh, one one thing like a strange coincidence uh, in a series of strange coincidences was that um, the tree of life is uh, I later found that it was also used on Armenian tombstones and uh, to me it's a symbol of hope and you know. Uh, promise of the other other side and other world something that's distant so. Um, um, when I learned that it's an Ar on Armenian tombstones, I also found that uh, Ustad Tam Thomas was uh, an Armenian. So I think that these, um, you know, uh, collaborations, the beauty of collaboration is that it uh, brings out um, things that are hidden otherwise and using the medium. So copper uh, in his hand was like clay, it acted like clay. It, does, it didn't look like something that's metal. And uh, um, that was quite interesting to see and observing him working with um, and the material, I think that is something that is very much missing in, in our practice, even as artists, not, I would, won't say uh, all of them, but um, majority of us, we, uh, I think that the medium holds the information and it imparts it to the person who spends time with it. So with these right. traditional pa practices, yes, there is a lot mm -hmm. to learn from. I think uh, we have a short video that mm -hmm. was created. So we could see that if, uh, it's available. And, uh, you know, Ustad Thomas himself speaks about the process 
and they're working with you. O sağçıdır, bir şeydir. Bende ben de şey yok. Çünkü ben kendi sağlık yerim. Ben kendi sağlıkçı olduğum için. Ben böyle çok uyuz zaman gelir. İtalya'dan gelir, Fransa'dan gelir, Amerika'dan geliyor. Hele ki yani bu eskiden şey gelirdi. Özbek, Tatar, Gürcü. Resim yapıyordum onlara. E tabi az bir zaman değil. Tam başa kadar 45 sene mi dedim. Yaşım 58. Şu devletin yani elat at olması çok kötü bir şey. <gülüyor> Ölüyor. Son nezit. Ben bir gittim bitti. Ya bitti derken. Yani yetişen yok. O yani apayrı bir olay. Benden sarıya adapte etme yani şu bu da nasıl şu sarıdır gözlüğü şu an şu sarıdır yani onu e, dört beş kere tertüz yaparak ana yaptım iki boy gibi bir şeydi yani o boyayla zenginleşti de olay ben yapamadım dedi ve en kolayını bir yaptı ki. Ben de sevdiğimiz için çok şahane bir şey yaptı. Yani bir kat, bir şeyler kattı ama öyle yaptı ki yani o adam şöyle çıktı ortaya. Yani istediği rengi buldu. Tabii ki kendi yapma. Benim gibi bir insan işte. Hatta boya yani eli çok iyi olan bir adam. Ama yapmış ya yani, yaptı yani güzel yaptı. Bizim şu renkleri Sırf. Orada aşağı yukarı 10 tane 20 tane renk var Abla her renkler Yani Burada ateş yapmaya çalışıyorum Çünkü Türk'te Tuttu tutmadı Cihaz'a gittik oldu olmadı falan filan yani Onun istediği olmadı Renk Ben de daha ederim Tabi Bilal'e görüştük en son Merak ettim ne yaptım onu diye. Hı hı. Çünkü niye? Yani çok güzel bir parça çıktı ortaya. Ki ben bir yerden ben bile ummuyordum o kadar olacağını. Ummuyordum. Güzellik yaptım. Maddi dedim, düşünmedim. Ne kadar veriyordum, onu veriyordum. O güzelliği yaptım yani. Ha yok, ben o konuda rahatım, niye rahatım? Ben gene gene yaptım. Herkese yapamadım. Bu olarak değil. Sanatsal bir şeyler yani ona bir katkı bulunduk. Ama iyi mi oldu, kötü mü oldu o kararı kendi verecek. Karar verdi. Mutlu gitti. Huzurlu gitti. Ki yani geri dönen her gün başa kadar geliyordu. Yani bizim burası bir esnaf yani yeri. Ha, bazı esnaf vardır. Demek bir şart lazım. Ama bir bazı esnaf var, bir esnaftır. Şimdi her, her sanatçı bir değil, bir değildir. Bir sanatkar var, bir zanatkar var. Bunlar farklı farklı şeyler. Oh, thank you, uh, Barack. I think we were able to see it with the sound most of the time, <laughs> except for a few hiccups. <laughs> but uh, that the video will be available on our YouTube channel later on. So if there are technical difficulties, I just wanted to say this.
Okay, because, uh, you know, this is technology and it happens. But um, reflecting back on it, uh, Maze, it's been about half a year since you're back uh, in your studio in, Kara in uh, Lahore and uh, working. How do you think that experience of the residency impacted your work? Um, uh, could you maybe, you know, tell us uh, if it has, your work has taken a new direction? Um, so uh, when I came back from Istanbul, I had to take up uh, my uh, position as an artist in residence in uh, London, uh, in this traditional school of arts, uh, Princess School of Traditional Arts. And um, um, this uh, experience in Istanbul had obviously um, um, shaped my way of uh, seeing um, art, uh, an art piece, an artwork. So I was um, very much interested in, now very much interested in, in how it was made. Um, uh, so I feel um, that um, the creation of a work of art um, is uh, very beautiful, but how it's made and, and, and the process uh, and the mediums used and um, the technique, it is uh, equally beautiful. So um, I was very much invested when I went there in making pigments, in spending time with pigments, in grinding. And I thought that, yes, as I said earlier also, that the medium itself holds a lot of knowledge and you become the vessel or uh, the artist and it's just how it flows through you. And uh, with these uh, traditional practices, I guess um, what I would intend or aim to do is it's not so much the revival of crafts, but the revival of the principle of creating a work of art, which uh, is um, which has changed in so many ways. So um, it I feel it requires your attention and a total submission because when you're working with natural pigments, for instance, if you're using two colors made from granite stones, uh, uh, they behave differently and they know if you're distracted. So uh, that awareness of material and technique, I guess that is quite um, new to me. And um, um, I think I would like to take it forward, um, working uh, like being more involved in, in the way I make a work. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Mazeb. It, mm -hmm. um, Gate 27 seems to have been quite a turning point in your yes. early you know, yes. stage uh, of your practice. And mm -hmm. now I'd like to you know, ask Burak if he'd like to invite some questions as well as maybe a few concluding remarks from him. Uh, Nilufar, we can start the question and answer session. Mm -hmm. If our participants uh, having any questions, uh, they can either write to our chat section or they can turn their microphone on and ask their question and then uh, again get in the silent mode. Is there any question? Mm -hmm. uh, I like this deep silence moments. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, well, but uh, I think I have a question to Masip. Uh, what I when I visited Thomas Ulutash, uh, he was so specific about the artist and the craftsperson distinguish. Do you have any idea about? Uh, is there any specific um, difference between these two? I mean, of course, there are some practical differences, but. He was so insisting on considering himself as an artist. It was interesting to me. Um, yes, yeah, so I feel that traditions and traditional practices also like gradually evolve, but with, um, with the mass productions and, and uh, the demands of like um, of these objects are, um, or these products are, I would say like with crafts, you're usually looking at functional objects and, um, Initially, uh, you start with obviously um, these uh, traditional practices started with uh, emphasizing on aesthetics as well as function. So um, that's why I, I feel the craftsperson are a little touchy who, who have had this experience. Um, but with the mass consumption and, and the uh, uh, 
production of plastic and industrialization, a lot is lost. And uh, I feel that now we see cheap imitations. That's why we find it derogatory. Uh, while in um, art, um, in, in contemporary art, a lot of artists are returning to these very practices. They are returning to um, the traditional ways of looking at things. And by tradition, it's not just um, you know um, what uh, existed, but it's how you approach the material and uh, what what is there to work like. Even um, there are some artists that spend a lifetime working just on paper, and that's how you befriend a paper and a surface, and you understand how much you can. Uh, explore uh, it and it's also a very um, you know uh, the relationship is different when when you spend time with with the medium which is important yeah thank you very much uh i think I Ms. Beral Medra is here with us today i would like to invite her uh she is also the artistic advisor to gate 27 uh thank you Burak. i am very uh... Really very happy to be part of this very important institution uh, in Turkey as well as in our region. And what I was thinking is that uh, this um, Masaib's uh, presence uh, with Nulifar's uh, support from uh, Pakistan uh, is a, one of the uh, first uh, exchange that happened in the last, uh, I don't know, many years. And I think this is uh, very important that we should uh, communicate with uh, our uh, neighbors and not only European Union neighbors, but also Asian, African neighbors. And uh, Gate 27 uh, takes a very significant role in this uh, uh, very politically correct and uh, very uh, also uh, artistically very significant uh, contribution. Uh, I am very uh, happy and proud of being. Uh, uh, being active uh, in uh, Gate 27. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Uh, I, I think I want to ask once again to our audience if they have any questions or comments. Uh, I will switch in Turkish right now to do the same announcement in Turkish as well. E, sorusu veya yorumları olanlar e, İngilizce sormaya çekiniyorlarsa eğer Türkçe de sorabilirler. Çok hızlı kısa bir çeviri gerçekleştirebilirim. I would like to add a, a comment and ask a question if it's possible. First of all, this this uh, thank you so much. Uh, this was such a great presentation and these are the main things that really excite me about the residency, seeing the impact and seeing the collaboration and listening to Lydia, listening to Christina, in addition to Masaib, it, it really made me uh, feel honored. So I am really, really excited and happy and humbled. I have a question for Masaib because I feel like uh, this residency actually put Matsai out of her comfort zone many, many, many times. And uh, it's there has been really different experiences such as changing the material you work with, but also talking, uh, working with someone from another generation from with a language barrier with <laughs> Thomas Susto who doesn't speak English. Uh, you had to collaborate, not even work, you had to collaborate in the same medium. Another thing was we put you in situations where you had to do presentations to people you don't even know. And you had to um, manage around a crazy city like Istanbul all alone. I mean, we, we supported you a little bit, but you've done all of that alone. So as a young artist, I want to hear a little bit about your experiences and your learnings in these areas. Because what I saw from my uh, journey with you is you've dealt with it very well um, and you've, you have great presentation skills. I think for a young, uh, for a young artist, you, you know how to present yourself very well. But I wanted to hear a little bit about your experience. 
Um, yeah, so um, like when you were saying that this and this, the hurdles and obstacles on the face value, it was almost like, you know, when you play a video game, there is level one, then level two. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just trying to struggle and get through the levels, but I guess it's also the support that I was getting from the team. And I, I knew that, you know, um, they've got my back. <laughs> so that was one thing. And also I felt, um, um, I, when I said liberated, it was also because I was, I felt I was independent and I could do things uh, while um, in, uh, people were uh, complaining there that it's not the same as Samuel had you come here 20 years ago and things um, like um, that for uh, various reasons. But when, when I was there, I felt like for, to me, I could smile to strangers and to me, I could talk and then uh, like, um, you know, even with the shopkeepers or when I would stroll about, I would just use the Google translator and that's how I would commute even with Elam. So uh, that was something, and, and I got very good with navigations when I get to, uh, when I got, uh, went to London, thanks to Istanbul, I was a pro. So, you know, uh, not once I got lost and that was something that uh, I owe to Istanbul and to you guys. But um, the barriers, I guess, when you're working with the material and um, because it's such a silent setup, uh, even if it's like the, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's the materials are loud, the metal is loud, but there is such a strange silence and you're so um, aware and conscious of other person that you get the nuances, uh, you know, he could get like my, uh, Thomas, he, he got the gestures very quickly. He would see through from my expression that I was happy or when I was upset. And, and that's how we, we were communicating, I guess. And um, also I had like translator with me at times, but um, it is, uh, I guess with, with, with arts or with, with the visual, when you, um, like the communication is different. It's, it's almost, it becomes, we become human again through arts. That's how I feel. Yes, so we don't need languages and we don't need differences when we are communicating with, um, with and for for a cause. Yes, it's very, I guess, vital to existence. That's beautiful. You gave me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in terms of time management, Nilipur, I would like to hand over you again, if we still do not have any question from our audience. I'm going to have a question. I want I have a question. May I go? Okay, yes. so um, uh, we discussed, I mean, I heard from Mazaip uh, about her origin and uh, the geography of her place and then about the craftsmanship and uh, how she collaborate. But uh, I would like to ask a few or if she can tell us a little bit about the concept of her work. Like, for example, I always find fascinating the way she dressed the, uh, one of the earlier works that she dressed uh, the stones with, uh, uh, with carpet. And then people think this is a mirroring, but then she draws her own sculpture with such uh, amazing details. And we, although she uh, used different materials during uh, uh, the residency, but uh, we see again a mirroring. So we see like uh, two sides of the different techniques and two sides. So. Um, I would like to ask um, Mazaik if she can give us some information uh, or hints what, uh, what, uh, is, uh, what is this for you? For example, you don't use mirrors, but you do the mirroring with another method with your, uh, you know, with your drawings or using the same material in a different way. Uh, I would just briefly like maybe with the one line just come up because that's something that happens also maybe with the subconscious, but I was looking at um, when I went to Sabanchi Museum, even for uh, for instance, there were illuminations and they were uh, mirrored images. So I asked someone, and um, the person said, "It's like you know, even in Quran, it's almost like a reflection of oneself, and God reflects through that." So I wonder sometimes if it is something that's metaphysical or if it means something else. But for me, using a hard surface and then draping it with with a carpet is also like you know, um, um, there is this constant slow decay that's happening and um, the disappearance of both the um, the hard matter and, and then something that's very fragile or looks very fragile because these are old carpets that you know come off if you even touch them so um, or, or brush them off so you can get rid of the patterns and uh, deconstructing the patterns of existing carpets and making a pattern which sometimes look like a map maybe or looking for a place or um, 
I don't know, mapping something. So I'm still like disoriented and finding my way. <laughs> yes, it's too soon to say what it is. <laughs> Yes, and when you have the tradition, like in some of your drawings, you have the tradition with the very, also very uh, colors that, uh, as you said, are very much inspired of the landscape. And we see like inside this, uh, uh, in these drawings that you have like pixels, like computer pixels. So, you know, suddenly some parts, you pixelize them like a computer and then the rest, you let them in more traditional techniques of drawings. Yeah. So when uh, when you are weaving, you use a grid, and um, I feel like that's why even these artisans have these geometric patterns. It's because they are limited to a grid, and when you are limited to a grid, if you even try to do a flower, it's almost it looks like a, a pixelated uh, image. And then it's also sometimes when the image is formed in a painting, it looks like you're censoring or hiding something. So there is a lot of hiding going on <laughs> in my work. <laughs> yeah. Another Thank question. you very much for your Thank question, you. Christina. That was great. Nina, yeah. so I would love to hand over to you again. Thank you, Barack. Uh, I think I'll just uh, say uh, very briefly that uh, when I heard Biral say about exchanges within the region, it just points to something that we have so much in common. And today's artist talk has, again, revealed that to us, that you know, there are crafts that we can share practices, uh, you know, ways of thinking, ways of seeing that are, you know, across political boundaries and, uh, you know, regions, uh, while art is concerned particularly. So this, um, I'd like to thank uh, Melissa and Biral who stepped in and contacted me in Pakistan. And of course, uh, you know, Barack, who's just joined the team, that, uh, you know, for me to be a part of this uh, conversation has been wonderful, uh, you know, and I wish uh, Gate 27 the best for future collaborations and residencies. Thank you. I would like to thank you all again to Nilufur, to Masayev, Christina and Lydia, and of course, Miss Melissa and Miss Beral, I mean, this project is so great that we can, uh, we made it happen. And also, I don't want to skip our sponsor, Intelia. We, I would love to thank Intelia again. Um, so we are pretty much good with the time management. So we will be uh, ending our session right on time. Uh, I would like to thank again to our audience uh, and have a nice day, have a nice Saturday. For today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.